Hello again, everybody, and welcome back. Today's topic, we continue our discussion of the Cold War, as you can see by the map uh, that we have in front of you here. Um, the world is being divided up. You have uh, the democratic world, you have the communist world, uh, and r the, the Cold War for much of it is going to be just that. It's going to be a battle to, for supremacy. Who is going to have more influence around the world? So let's get into it. Uh, our first uh, first item is this thing called domino theory. Now domino theory uh, specifically um, applied to Southeast Asia. And the thought here uh, for the Americans was um, the fear that if one Southeast Asian nation was allowed to become communist, that the rest of them would fall like dominoes, that um, they would all become communist at that point. So the domino theory uh, basically was an excuse for us to get involved in Southeast Asia and further that idea of containment, that we're going to prevent the spread of communism. So people will ask, well, why did we get involved in Vietnam? Vietnam had nothing to do with this. Well, the North wanted to be uh, be communist. The South wanted to be democratic. We had to get involved so that all of these other countries didn't become communist as well. This idea of McCarthyism um, and, and the Red Scare, we've talked about that previously, so we don't feel the need to go into a lot of this. But once again, Joseph McCarthy um, he had this list of 205 people who were supposedly, uh, you know, communists, and he was going to bring them to justice. He was going to um, go around just blindly accusing people of being communists. That was going to, uh, you know, just the, the 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 charge could have a dramatic impact on people. Just being labeled as you might be a communist was a reason for people to lose jobs, um, to have their reputation tarnished. Uh, so, so it was really, really serious what he was actually doing. Created the HUAC, the House Un-American Activities Committee, and uh, ultimately that was the group that would call people to Washington, put them on trial, and basically say, "Hey, we believe you're a communist," and basically try to get them to confess to being uh, being communist. Here's the big thing that I would make sure that I understand about all this. Um, the idea of someone being a communist, actually, as much as people then and even now probably would not like the idea of communists being here in the United States, um, it was not illegal. However, blindly accusing people of crimes that they did not commit, that you have no evidence for, that absolutely is illegal. So what the government was doing here was illegal. What people were being accused of was actually not illegal. So out of 205 people, how many did he actually find guilty of being communist? Absolutely nobody. Spend millions of dollars to do basically nothing. All right, so the next one, uh, Castro brings communism to Cuba. We now have communism in the Western world. He actually started to do this in 1953, uh, trying to get some people together to try and overthrow the government, but he ultimately was defeated and sent to prison, um, sentenced to 15 years in prison. But by 1955, uh, the government decided, hey, let's give some amnesty to some political prisoners and released him from jail, but kicked him out of the country. He goes to Mexico for a while, starts raising money, raising a fighting force to try and come back. Incidentally, while he was doing this, this is going to be kind of crazy. While he was doing this, he actually was a very, very popular speaker at colleges in the southern parts of the U.S. because he was this revolutionary. So he actually got paid by colleges in the United States to come and talk about being a revolutionary. Oh, by the way, he's going to bring communism also to Cuba. Uh, so within uh, you know a year or so of being let out of prison, he gets a group together. He comes back to Cuba, and January first, nineteen fifty nine, the dictator Batista leaves Cuba, allowing Castro to make it a communist 
country. So we now have communism in the Western world. The United States government obviously is not going to be crazy about having a communist country right on their doorstep. At its closest point, I believe Cuba is about 90 miles off the coast uh, of the United States. So the United States government and the CIA specifically decide we're going to do something about it. So in April of 1961, the CIA secretly equipped and trained Cuban exiles in an attempt to overthrow Castro. Castro had round up, uh, rounded up all of the anti-communist, anti-Castro people in Cuba and had kicked them out of the country. Where do most of them go? southern florida so you had a bunch of people living in florida that did not like castro the cia decided okay we'll train them we'll have them overthrow the government and then it looks like we're not even involved not only that we'll go so far as we're not going to attack from the north where the united states is we'll come around to the south and we'll really make it look like we had nothing to do with it so they train these people they plan this secret attack and ultimately Castro finds out about it as his military just sitting here waiting for them to come ashore. It is a massive ambush. It is a huge, it's, it's a horrible failure. The United States government, the CIA, President Kennedy all look really, really, really foolish um, because they failed so miserably. And that's why it winds up also being known as the Bay of Pigs. Next one, the U-2 incident. What you are looking at is a U-2 spy plane. These were used to fly over enemy territory. They could fly 15 miles uh, above the ground and still take uh, you know, usable pictures. Um, it was thought that these things could not be shot down. These things were invincible. May 1960. Uh, the United States sends a U-2 spy plane over Soviet territory. Um, the Soviets find out that it's there. They shoot a guided missile uh, towards it. Again, Americans are thinking, man, this plane can't be touched. But what happens is it actually does get shot down. In most uh, times, there probably would have been some sort of immediate response. But if we had immediately responded, then we look stupid, we look silly, we uh, have to admit that we're doing something that's illegal, spying on um, you know, the Soviet Union. So we don't retaliate, but what does come out of this is Americans become very willing to do whatever it takes to overtake the Soviets. They um, are... are going to work harder. They're going to give up more. Um, sort of like after uh, September 11th, 2001, a lot of Americans said, hey, we'll give up freedoms. We'll give up rights in exchange for uh, finding the terrorists, for uh, safety within our, our borders. Same kind of thing here. It's going to change the minds of the people. And maybe we're not going to complain about it so much. Maybe we're going to do a little bit more to try and make sure that we beat out the Soviets. So it's kind of a motivating factor. Cuban Missile Crisis, you had an opportunity to go through this uh, on your own. Just uh, get some, some very quick basics. This is October of 1962. Soviet Union is putting uh, nuclear missiles in Cuba. Uh, American spy planes, once again, provide photographic evidence like what you see on the screen that show missiles are being constructed uh, in Cuba. Uh, at that point, uh, negotiations start out. You have uh, negotiations specifically between these, uh, the, the leaders of these two countries. You have Khrushchev, who is the uh, Soviet premier. You have Kennedy, who is the American president. They're, they're both um, you know, trying to see who's going to blink first. Um, they're not going to directly talk to one another because it wasn't done at that time. Uh, but ultimately, they have to figure out, okay, what is it that's going to happen with this? We can't just sit and let it happen. So um, they're pre President Kennedy is provided with four different options from his uh, experts. Hey, negotiate, or um, you could invade Cuba, you could blockade Cuba, or you could just bomb, try and bomb the missile sites before they're operational. 
Um, everybody's going to have a differing opinion. Kennedy is going to decide, let's just blockade him and try and stop stuff from coming in. Uh, turns into a standoff. Um, there's some back channel negotiating through, uh, you know, a friend of a friend of a friend who knows a guy kind of thing. And uh, ultimately, it is going to be the closest that we're going to come to a nuclear World War III. Um, the ships coming from the Soviet Union got to less than a minute before American ships were going to fire on them. And um, if that had happened, surely there would have been uh, there would have been a war. There probably would have been nuclear missiles used during that war. So ultimately, cooler heads prevailed. Uh, but this did lead to um, a direct line being set up between the White House in the United States and the Kremlin in, uh, in, in Moscow, Soviet Union, so that the leaders could have direct communication and they would absolutely know who they were talking to. JFK assassination, again, we did uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, information about that yesterday. So, um, you know, just once again, You've got uh, uh, the president in Dallas. He's on a parade route. He winds up getting shot. Now, how, who shot him? The official Warren Commission report says that it was Lee Harvey Oswald acting by himself. Uh, a lot of evidence has come out that said a little bit of doubts on uh, whether or not that's true uh, or not. But like I say, you guys went through that uh, yesterday. Our last one for today, China is going to detonate an atomic bomb in 1964. They are going to become the fifth nation to have nuclear capabilities. We would probably say, well, hey, this is U.S. history. Why do we care about China detonating atomic bomb? What this shows is that the Soviet Union is going to help other people get this technology, um, which shouldn't surprise us because we had done the same thing. We had shared this knowledge with the British and with the French. So now we have it, the British, the French, the Soviets, and now because of this, um, the Chinese are also going to have it. And it's very clear that it's the Soviets that helped them to get it. Um, they had started helping them in June 1959. And the project for this was known as uh, 596. So uh, the six would be June, 59 would be obviously 1959. All right, so we're going to uh, stop there for today. We'll do the other half of these, uh, you know, tomorrow and start to wrap things up.